Hello, I'm Paco Muñoz. Let me explain the push-pull pattern in Zero and Q. The goals of this presentation are to correctly identify the push-pull pattern in Zero and Q, to use this pattern in proper scenarios, and to revise the advantages of asynchrony in regard to throughput. The contents of this presentation are structured in this way. Let's start. Zero and Q provides different types of sockets, rec rep, push pull, pop sub, etc. In the push pull pattern, we intercommunicate two processes one that behaves as a sender and that uses a push socket to this end, and another that receives messages and uses a pull socket to that end. The pattern is asynchronous. This means that all the operations return control almost immediately and don't block the processes. Let's describe the pattern. It's a unidirectional data propagation. The sender doesn't expect any reply back. And messages don't wait for replies they admit concurrent sending. In this example, a sender uses the push socket and a receiver gets the message and propagates it to a third process using, again, the push and pull sockets. With this pattern, we may implement multiple connections in order to build a typical map reduce structure, as the one depicted in this second part of the slide. Here, the source of information uses the push socket in order to propagate tasks to many participants in the map phase, the map stage. So, each one of those participants uh, processes the delivered task and finally sends the result to a reducer, that is this third process. Later on, other tasks are delivered to other processes. This is made in a round-robin fashion using multiple connections from this push socket to many other pulls. On the other hand, in the second stage, many push sockets are connected to a single pull receiver. In this case, the pull receiver is using a fair queuing strategy since all messages are processed in FIFO order. As we may see, this management uses a circular strategy. Let's see an example of programs. In the first program, we implement the sender. To this end, we import the 0MQ module in the first line we declare the socket in the second line, we define a counter initialized to the zero value, and the producer binds its push socket to this URL. In the listener of the end of that binding, we implement the following logics. If any error happens, we throw an exception. Otherwise, we use the set interval operation in order to propagate periodically, that is, once per second, messages to their receiver that will use a pull socket. So, in the receiver, we import the 0 and Q module, we define the appropriate socket, in this case a pool 1, 
we connect the socket to the same URL that we specified in the previous case, but here we state that the address to connect to is a local address. This receiver will receive messages using the message event to this end, and the listener for that event receives the messages consisting of a single segment, and that content of the message is displayed using this statement, a console log that shows this message and the contents of the message. Can we implement clients and servers using this pattern? Clients and servers regularly use the REC and REP sockets, but those sockets are synchronous, and this is inconvenient in regard to throughput. May we implement an asynchronous pattern using a pair of push-pull connections? Well, we'll see that no, that's impossible. Let us see why. We set a connection between a push socket in the client and a pull socket at the server. The client uses that connection in order to send the request. And the server uses a reverse connection in order to send the replies. Well, that's perfect for a single client. Let's assume that there are many clients, as is the common case with successful servers. So now the client starts as before and sends another request. But in the interim, a second and a third clients have been connected to those sockets. As a result of this, when the server processes the second request, or another one, sent by the same client, in the end, those replies are sent in the first case to the first client, because it was connected first, but the second and third replies are sent to the second and third clients. So, they are receiving responses for requests that were not sent by them. So, this doesn't work as expected. We cannot use these sockets in order to implement client-server interactions if we forecast that there will be many clients. Let's conclude. Once this presentation is ended, the student should be able to correctly identify the push-pull pattern in 0MQ, use that pattern in proper scenarios, and revise the advantages of asynchrony in regard to throughput.